one of the most difficult obstacles in meditation and also one of the most helpful tools in meditation. It's how to convert the slithering, rabid, driveling, thinking mind (laughs) into something useful. Instead of letting it just use up all your energy babbling away. (laughs) It's kind of, you know, unresolved emotional stuff of indignation or fantasies or craving or regrets and, you know, these unresolved emotions and uh, issues and things and your thinking mind is just powered by that. It's really not the thought, the fault of the thinking mind. The thinking mind is just getting its instructions from the agitated heart, the chitta. And, uh, but it's exceptionally um, engaging. And once, you, once it gets down a track, uh, the thinking mind and the heart get stuck in a track and they go on and on and on. So you want to really recognize the strength of that and how to get it on the useful track what's really useful. Because this is where you really start, this is where you're creating mental karma. Mental karma, ingrained habits, ways of thinking, affect the way we see the world, affect the way we see other people, affects the way we regard ourselves. It's like, you know, thinking mind governs how you experience the world. But you can turn it. You know, you can deliberately think. Sometimes it's better to try to deliberately think rather than trying to stop thinking. Sometimes it's just too difficult to stop thinking, so you have to deliberately think, give it something else to do. Often this is through uh, questions, because questions cause the mind to pause. You, know, you ask a question, at the end of the question, your mind goes, oh, what's the answer to that? There's that moment of pausing. What's this? Huh? And you get that moment where your mind hovers, at least for a split second, to try to find what the question was pointing at. So we make the uh, resolution, though we won't necessarily be able to keep it, but we use it as a track, as a a guide. The resolution is uh, stay inside this room. Stay inside as close as you can get to here and now. Mm. (laughs) You know, so you find yourself thinking about tomorrow, other people, Yesterday, the way life should be, the world, say, not now. It's almost say that to yourself, not now. Not not never, but not now. Get used to being able to, to think short, clear, unwavering statements to yourself. Stop. Not now. You know? Put it aside. Stop. Not now. Hmm. And the question is, where are you? How? Where are you now? How do you know you're here? Hmm. Don't linger too long in that one. Don't, don't linger in any of these because your probably mind will start going, well, maybe I'm because of this or that. It should be using that question just to block the mind's conceivings and weavings. I want to get it to, to look into what a feeling is, a feeling of uh, what's here. 
the easiest thing that will help you to do that is the feeling, you know, the sensations that you call your body. You just want to be able to sense that. Do you have a feet? Do you have back? Do you have backside? Do you have hands? How do you know that? And you keep kind of, you know, putting these questions in, even if you get no answer. Just put the question there, get to the question mark, and really try to feel the body. Mm. Might even momentarily, even just slightly, you know, feel your hand, slightly flex your hand. Just to get a sense of that that piece, that that thing. Yeah. Strengthen your back, draw yourself upwards when you think back spine. You know. Use that question to Fully experience the spine. Pull the lower back in. Pull the back in between the shoulder blades. Drop the shoulders. Just make that like a small, almost like a micro yoga asana. Just drawing in, drawing up. What's the back? How tall is it? How painful is it? How comfortable is it? Just keep asking these questions to steer the mind to turn it towards parts of your body and you have to judge from what your own thinking mind is doing if it's really running around you've got to let it you know Running out, just use the stop, not now. Bring it back, like you're training a dog. Puppy likes to play, run out. It's not vicious approach, it's a firm, be the governor, be the master. Don't run after the mind, thinking mind, get it to come back. You pull it back runs out, you pull it back. Mm. Keep your eyes open, you know, because all you want to do is just learn that one thing of the ability to acknowledge, pull the thinking mind back to here. So it's like you're really indicating that you're going to be the master of that. You've got to get that lesson firmly established. And if it takes, when you're training a dog, that's what you do. If we do anything else, you get it to know what the ma- who the master is. And the master is kind, but firm. So in this exercise, the beginning of it, your main uh, concern is to not let the mind build up, thinking mind build up a whole narrative, fantasy, speculation, doubt, accusations, tribunals, all the flavorings and the colorings of the agitated heart are given structure and free range to roam. You're checking that. 
Recognition that yeah, you deal with the heart later, but first one has to learn to be restrained. Get, bring it back into the body. Twofold thought, one is pointing, or vitaka, the other is evaluating or assessing vichara. So now as we come into the body, just exercising the twofold thought process. Hey, you know, how do you know you have a knee? How do you know you have two knees? Point. What's that? Where's the sensation? How do you know the difference between one and the other? Imagine your mind is like a hand and for a moment you touch then you hold that knee like you're holding it in your hand feeling it like you're someone who's feeling the weight or the texture of a part of the body, like a doctor or a physician, just holding it there. There's that, and there's that, there's that, and there's that. You can do the same with your shoulders, your hands, And just someone like like a potter or a sculptor who's making a figurine out of clay. So you start to build up the impression of the body. And it's got elbows, it's got hips, it's got a back, it has a chest. How's that? How's that? How's that? It's like you're patting was getting a tactile feeling for the body, just like you're shaping something out of clay, out of modeling clay. How does the head sit? Is it wobbling off the shoulders? How does it sit properly? What's the shape of that? The chin, the cranium. Mm. You really, you know, if your thinking mind is one that goes spacey, dreams and drifts, we try to be precise exact and specific if it can't sustain attention on one point for very long just keep stabbing away at it just flicking back flicking back like you're just touching it touching it touching it main thing is it's not not letting it run out to do its own meanderings and wanderings but
use the vichara, the assessing, evaluating aspect of the mind. You want to uh, exercise that. This is simply doing things like noticing the difference between the sensations that you call your teeth and your lips, very close together, one is very soft, the other is hard. The moisture of the mouth compared with the backs of the hands or the face, moist and dry, yeah. hard, soft. Mm. So clear distinctions in how we can experience that. You know? So you're asking the mind, tell me about it, tell me about this part terms of these very simple primary textures Is it like one or two word descriptions and using the thinking mind to to name that clearly connecting uh, and as you con use a word like hard or soft or moist at the same time you're feeling it, sensing it, the sensations there. Exploring it. And you can come into other experiences like a degree of how agreeable sensations are. Like it would be in the size of your neck across your shoulders. Does it feel slightly sore or stiff there or tense or the lower back? Is that pleasant, unpleasant? Would you like to have more of that or less of it? Exploring it. And then you use the mind like a retriever dog. It runs out, it brings back something, and you take hold of what it's brought back, and it's holding it. See if you can, you know, just as an exercise in training the mind. into one word descriptions not epics novels simple one word and what's the feeling so if you can get from you know the pointing to a part of the body then the assessing and the what it's like and then going to the feeling itself 
or the sensation itself. Mm. See if we can just really take that in directly. What does soft feel like? In words, it just feels soft. But beyond words, Noticing the effect it has, or hard, pleasant, unpleasant. Even what your mind can find, it can rest on. Sometimes mildly unpleasant sensations are quite easy to the mind to, to sit on. Yeah, so certainly if I feel sleepy or dull, I might take up a position that's slightly unpleasant in my legs, so it's got something clear for the mind to, to settle on. Yeah. For it to be able to point to and note and explore. If you're sleepy, groggy, then you, sometimes you can't find anything to focus on, so you create something, physical something.
the mind builds up or develops the ability to persist a little longer and you try staying with breathing so you with something that who's, where the sensations are changing yeah. so the question is am I breathing is the body breathing how do I know I'm breathing You know, swelling, pushing, di- distending, subsiding, shift of pressures that you acknowledge is the breathing process and then try to stay in that frame of reference while the sensations change from strong to slight, from pushing to subsiding. This is enormously... Um, helpful for soothing the heart, calming the heart. So then we've really turned thought around to where it can be uh, a great assistant for calming the heart. So the heart isn't giving out the wrong messages. Then you have to train the thinking mind firmly mm. can you stay can your thinking mind persist in acknowledging sensations of one out breath and just relax on the in breath in Focusing on the next out breath, the fullness of it, the completion, the ending of it, the stopping of it. do that then you the mind has thinking mind has been trained to a degree this means that when it runs off the next time it's going to run off obviously as soon as you notice it you just pause You're giving it the eye. You're really staring at it. Hey, what are you up to? And then, where's the next breath? So this time, the thinking mind, rather like a dog that you train, it knows it's done wrong. So you don't have to do anything more than just give it a clear gaze and then come on breathe out let's go back to that
can, if it seems to be working, fine tune it, how can it get more consistently steady, more embedded in the breathing, picking up a different change of textures, sensitizing to change of texture in the breathing that's coarse or fine, warm, strong, like a thread, like you're handling a thread of yarn. And it be unbroken. So as you're breathing out, and then you stay with that right through the end of the out breath, and perhaps there's a pause, staying with that, then the flowing in of the in breath becomes an unbroken yarn, weaving. The mind can get more and more embedded in that, picking up sensations, the energies and also begin to experience itself that more uh, peaceful, more steady, less preoccupied, more open. Valuing the results of a practice. <laughs>